The creative arts contributes roughly $14.7 billion to GDP, according to the Australian Institute. And the creative arts also employ the same amount of people as the finance industry. Well, joining me live is one of Australia's finest performers, Michael Cormick, who will be starring in the Tony Award-winning Broadway musical, The Kaja Fob. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you? And thank you for spending time with us on your Easter Sunday. Hi, Jenny. How are you? Very well indeed. Well, this musical, 11 Tony Awards, based on the 1973 French play, the musical opened in Broadway in 1983. Give us a bit of a snapshot of, of what people can expect. Oh, Le Cache Fall is set in um, Saint-Tropez in France in, in the 80s, which is, as you said, opened in 1983. And uh, really, to me, it's a major love story between two men, um, Georges, who I play, and Alban, and Alban is also a drag queen, so it's in a drag club. And our son comes home and announces that he's to be married to a woman, shock horror. Um, so it's, um, it's a French farce in many ways, in, in, in my terms. And also, I think the love story is the most important part of the story. Um, very, very funny, very heartfelt. And the incredible Paul Katsis plays opposite me, who is um, a tour de force to watch in this show. And I'm sure, Michael, most people will know the song, I Am What I Am. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us about that song. It's a, oh, it's a good one. Well, it's become an iconic song, hasn't it, mm -hmm. really? And it's, um, I think, especially today, it's really got a poignant message, hasn't it? Um, I, yeah, I, I just think it's, uh, again, you know, people might remember it as a disco hit. It's been done in many different forms. But um, its lyric is all about being who you are and being able to celebrate that. Absolutely. We, uh, you know, one of our main stories today is on cost of living, as we know full well, but the uh, creative mm. arts employ around 147,000 jobs a year in Australia. Yeah, well. Why do you think it's important, not just for the economy and for artists like yourself to be in the job that you love, but for the audience in terms of the experience they do get when going to a show? Well, again, you know, it's at any time, I suppose, not, well, any time, but any time of trouble in the world or whether it's um, <clears throat> you know, some kind of despair, this is something to lighten people's mood, isn't it? And it's always some kind of form of art that people can come to enjoy, feel lighter about their lives and feel good when they leave the theatre. Absolutely. Well, we know your CV, too long to mention. We'll be here for, for days. <laughs> uh, people will know you as, uh, as the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. You've done numerous musicals here overseas. You've been, you've been and done everything, TV as well. Tell us about musical theatre and what you love about it. I think it's, uh, it's live element. You know, when you get to connect with an audience, it's more immediate than doing TV. So therefore, and, and musicals particularly, because you get to have the uh, joy of music. So therefore, to me, it's about a connection. And when we get to connect with an audience, it's kind of very immediate. So I think people feel it more, more than they would sitting at home, you know, with the TV. Um, they get to feel it and walk home with that experience. And people that are not in the industry often would say, oh, gosh, eight shows a week, the same thing over and over again. Don't yeah, you get yeah, yeah, bored? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know the funny thing is people also look at it as being very glamorous, but it's actually really hard work. And, you know, the eight show a week thing, as you mentioned, um, I think it's about uh, really, it's about our passion. And when we stick with that, knowing the audience it's the first time that they're seeing it, you, know, you want to give everybody that really special experience when they come to the theatre. So we've got to remember that and make it feel like it's our first time ever playing that role. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we're seeing some, some great shots there of Lakaja Fall, which, of course, is returning oh, to Sydney you? at the State Theatre. Yeah, so, you know, tell us about that. Tell us about the rehearsals and what people can expect, the colour, the <clears throat> costumes. Well, again, I said that sort of sits in a saint Tropez nightclub in the 80s. So we have, you know, eight incredible dancers who, who are boys, but, you know, uh, playing girls in, in the show. Um, and the costumes, again, the sets, you know, the choreography, you know, done by Veronica Beattie is so beautiful. The, the, they're incredible dancers and incredible actors, you know, too, because we're all telling a story. Um, and I think people leave just with a sense of joy also about the relationship and about the sparkle and the glamour and the, and the everything of a, of a drag club, really. Mm. Well, it looks fantastic and, uh, you know, we wish you all the very best for this show. Thank One you. last question, Michael. You know, you are an extraordinary talent. 
in all ways and you've had such an amazing career. What advice would you give young performers, people wanting to get into the industry, whether they want to perform, whether they want to be backstage, whatever? We know it's a cutthroat industry mm. and uh, ups and downs, all that. But um, do you have any messages that you would give some young people entering? Absolutely. Don't do it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Really, you know, again, you know, life is short, you know, and one must go with one's passion, I believe. So if you're passionate about it, but you've got to realise, um, I'd say to anybody younger going into it, that it, it's not an easy road and it's hard work. It really is a hard slog. Um, not only getting the jobs, but then when you've got it, you've got to keep that quality. And, you know, that, that is eight shows a week. That is rehearsal. That is hard work. So be passionate. And if you're that passionate about it, absolutely 100% go for it. Because, you know, we talk about the pandemic and Broadway was the first to shut down that industry and uh, a lot of people in your industry, they, they do, you know, free concerts to raise money and so forth, which is wonderful and you will always continue to do that. But mm. it's the resilience, isn't it, when we hear about performers who go for a job, their, their season might only be for a number of days and then they're, they're that high and that adrenaline, and then it's all down and then it's up and down. And, you know, it's, there's and then it's so next, much. yes. That's it. That's is... probably the part we said, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I really was joking about that. But no, I know. Yeah, I know. There, are, yeah. there are elements of that, you know, where it is, it's a tough industry. And, again, it's never... Uh, it's very difficult not to take rejection personally uh, in life, you know, but our, our, our world is full of uh, no's and it's full of yeses, but it's full of no's. And really, for anybody young out there, who's, you've got to become resilient, very resilient to that. And I understand it's about a combination of many, many things. It's not about your talent. Um, and when you do get that moment to shine, that's about work. And that's when you get in there and you really work and love every minute of it. Well, I think it's about your talent, quite frankly, with uh, what you've been in, but I know what you mean. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's been extraordinary watching you over the years and congratulations and all the best for La Caja Fall at the uh, State Theatre in Sydney. And we'll Thank you. see you very soon, Michael Cormick. Thank you. Thank you.